Divine Truth Paget Messages Discussions Discussions of individual messages received by James Paget between 1914 and 1923 from a large variety of spirits. This is Session 2, Part 2 of the discussion, How Divine Love Enters the Human Soul, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing a message from Jesus given to James Paget on the 23rd of March, 1916, which is the first of two messages about how divine love enters the human soul and the differences between the soul and the spirit and physical bodies. The session was recorded on 19th of July, 2017, from 12.20 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do you want to read our next paragraph? Sure. Yeah. The mind of man was a special creation, just as were the minds of the lower animals, differing only in degree. And if God had not given to man a soul and the spirit body to envelop it, and in which he placed this mind of man, when man died the death of the physical body, it would have been the end of him, as such death is of the body, which is not a part of this soul image of God. Hmm. Hmm. So here, this is a really interesting point, I think, given, and, and you just alluded to it in our previous discussion as well, how much we're talking about the soul is the real us and the fact that, you know, if we didn't have a soul and a spirit body, when our physical body died, that would be it mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And yet, as we talked about yesterday, we place so much importance on this physical body mm -hmm. and yet it's just a mere... Well, I feel the reason why we do is because we do believe that, that yeah. the physical body after its death is the end of us. M most people, even most religious people, to be honest, yeah, still prove by their actions, the, f the fact that they're willing to fight for their life yeah. is proof through their actions that they don't really believe in an afterlife. Yeah. They don't really believe in it, yeah. in their heart. You know, yeah. They talk about it and they hope for it, right? But they don't really have any evidential proof yeah. that they've supplied to themselves to build enough faith to actually prove that it is actually true. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, their actions in their day-to-day -day life, in the, physical, in the physical expression of their life, prove mm -hmm. that they really do not believe mm -hmm. in the fact that this, the, this body, the, the, the physical body is only a part of man. Yeah. Because they have no real concept of if a part of man lives on what part of of man is it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. is it just the mind yeah. and this is where the mind of god and the mind of the human come in is a a lot of people believe well it's only the mind that lives on yeah or there's these theories that are oh, all of the things that you think are th thoughts are energies in mm -hmm. motion mm -hmm. and so therefore once you die you're left with just the energies in motion still in motion I don't even understand how Going that through could the work. Universe, do you know what I mean? Right. Oh, so it's just like a, a frequency, an emanation coming out of you. Well, no, forever. it's like sending a message and yep. then terminating the message. The message still, still gets going. transmitted, yeah. right? Yeah. And and that's how they think of uh, the mind of a, of a person okay. as well, yeah. even after you die. So, so there's plenty of theories regarding all of these things, and unfortunately, no real definite understanding about what what the human is actually mm -hmm. and as a result of that there's a whole lot of very contrary theories in fact that are then incorporated into many religious formats but also into atheism and other types of what i would classify still as religions yeah um where people have belief systems that are quite well established based upon what they believe is possible right yes but here we're saying uh, this this also this paragraph is a point of logic and the, the logic is this if it is such that our thoughts, right, were actually just a part of our physical body, mm -hmm. then once our physical body died, so would our thoughts. Yeah. We would have, all of our memories would die, all of our thoughts would die, all of our feelings would die, mm -hmm. everything would die. We would not exist anymore in any level, yeah. or on any ma matter. And, and that is a point of logic in the sense that if something is proven to be live, lived on of a person, yes, right, 
then surely it's also evidence that we are more than the physical. Mm. Uh, and, and this is where I feel uh, there's plenty of evidence that, that some parts of the human live on. Could you tell us the evidence? <clears throat> well, well, through things that, you know, frequently people who have had pa people pass, uh, loved ones who have passed, frequently feel that that loved one is with them, mm -hmm. right? Now, now, a lot of times they feel it after a lot of years of not feeling it even. Yeah. Right. So, so where does the feeling come from that's quite contrary mm -hmm. to their own concepts and ideas? Yep. Where does this feeling it's got to come from an external source, right? But they'd rather believe what? That it comes from some kind of longing inside of them. I don't know. But, mm. what, you know, a lot of people... But if you start analysing the evidence... That, that intentions are able to be transmitted even. A example of that, dogs that are connected to their owners know when their owners are coming home. Mm. They do. That's a, a known fact. Yeah. How do they know? Yeah. There has to be some way that the dog is receiving the intention of its owner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and the owner's not present. Yes. So, so there's got to be some way the dog, if the dog can receive an intention of an owner mm -hmm. who is not present, then why can't a human? Yeah. We're meant to be a higher creation, aren't we? Yeah. So why can't we receive that intention? So you're saying that just the evidence that there is something beyond our physical body that, so for example, when in the example of the dog and its owner, the owner is still in their physical body. They're still alive. So it's not but evidence they're not that... they're not present. That's right. It's not evidence that they've passed, that their physical body's died, but it's it's showing that that their physical body is not in a location, but a part of them is basically impacting on another location. Yeah. And what part of them is it? Yes. And if, if a dog can receive the thoughts and intentions of a person, then surely a human can. Isn't it interesting that how blocked we are to... The dog is more open than, than people are to each other. Of course. Yeah. The dog doesn't have a, a, a whole set of emotional histories yeah. which prevent it from being open. Yes. Right, yes. Usually, yeah. you know, unless it's been abused, and yes. of course it does, but, yeah. Yeah. but usually it doesn't. Yeah. And so it's open to its owner. Yeah. It's open to, you know, its owner's intentions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's, there's plenty of evidence in the physical realm even that, there, there are, that things, aside from the things that we can see, mm -hmm. are able to emanate out of the human and into other creatures yep. and have an effect on them. Yes. Right. So that, that's, a, that's a fairly well-known fact, in fact. Yeah. There's plenty of experiments that have been done where humans even feel love for something and, and that thing changes. Yes. Well, how, how does that happen? Yeah. But obviously that thing is sensitive to the feeling of love, not just the thoughts of it. Yeah, yeah. So, so but in this regard, what, the reason why I raise that is that, is that if we, our mind was our in our physical body only, then obviously once our physical body died, yes, we would. that would be the end of us. Yeah. It would be the end of it us. It would be the end of us. And, and we would not exist after that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's what many Christians actually believe. Mm. And they believe that a resurrection is required to reconstruct, if you like, the mind that is now deleted. Yeah. And they believe that our spirit or the, you know, the part of us that it makes us who we are, mm -hmm goes back to God when we die, and then God can reconstruct it again later if he wants to, yeah. is the idea. Yeah. But uh, none of that is actually based on any facts that they have found, mm -hmm. but rather only on imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so, but you're laying it pretty clear here in this message that this, and, and, yeah. Well, the, the other thing I'd like to say here too is that I'm comparing the human mind, the physical body's brain, if you like, with the and the spirit body's mind, with the f physical body of a dog or a cat, a mammal's brain, yeah. and the spirit mind of that same creature. Mm -hmm. And the, the reality is the two are quite similar in some respects. They they have similar operational requirements placed upon them. The, the spirit body's mind, in the case of the animal, does operate and drive what happens to the animal Jeez. while it's in the spirit or other, this other dimensional, yep. this spirit dimensions. Just like the 
physical, the spirit body's mind of the human drives his physical actions in the spirit state yeah. in, in the same way. But obviously it's a lower creation in the sense that it, it's less complicated. Mm -hmm. So an animal's mind in its spirit form is less complex mm -hmm. than the body of a human's mind in the spirit form. Yes. But they do have similar physiological and, uh, and, and spiritual functions. Mm -hmm. And the same applies to the brain of a dog compared to the brain of a human. Yep. The brain of a human, obviously more complex, yep. has more operations, it controls more functionality, and, but it is similar in a lot of ways to the mind of a dog in the, in the way in which it operates yeah. and it, what it controls and creates. And the brain of the physical body is not self-aware. In the animal? No, in the human or the, the animal. Human. Right, yeah. In the human or the animal. Yeah. Self-awareness comes from the soul. Yes. Only. Yeah. That's what God, God gave free will to the soul. God gave the ability to become self-aware to the soul. So any self-awareness that exists in the human does not exist in the human's brain, mm -hmm. it, in the physical body, nor does it exist in the mind of the spirit body. Yeah. It exists in the soul yeah. of the individual. <laughs> And so do you think that that's why our brain is more complex than animals? Of course, because uh, to compute self-awareness mm. requires intellect mm -hmm. and far more extremely far developed more. intellect yeah. than the intellect of an animal is capable of generating. Yeah. So yes, our, our, our mind, our spirit body's mind and our physical body's brain has needs to be, has to be more complicated because it has to allow for the transmission and, and reception of information regarding self-awareness. But See, the actual self-awareness does not come from those sources. No. It comes from the soul. Yes, yes. And it, it, that's interesting in a way, isn't it? Because, you know, we use such a small percentage of our brain. We do. And, and so therefore we, we are we could very... Think, can I just say we can think as a result of that that we must have a certain limitation to our self-awareness. <laughs> that was my point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can say that most of us are not aware of our so We're not aware of ourselves as God created us. And it, it's quite logical to think that given what you said about how complicated our brain must be in order to compute any level of self-awareness, the fact that it, it would be so interesting to study them, the more and more of the brain that is used the more and more we become aware of ourselves as God actually created us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And one of the main reasons why we only use 5% or so of our brain at this stage is because of our limited self-awareness. Yes. And, yeah. and this, this severely restricts the spirit body and the connection with its soul from communicating with the brain that we have. The, phys sorry, the, the physical, sorry, the physical brain. brain. You mean, yep, yep. Because it, 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 the the restriction is placed upon it by by our desire to remain unaware. Yeah. And 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 the reality is, most humans do desire to have a large degree of unawareness, we, because <laughs> we do actively most... actively desire it. Yes. Yeah. And the reason why we actively desire it is because we have this saying that many of us agree with, and that is that ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. We sort of believe the less we know, the less we have to be responsible for, and the less, you know, the more happier we're going yeah. to be. None of that obviously is is true. Yeah. You know, the, obviously, the more aware we become, the potential we have to be far more happy than if we are unaware. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, that's not what we tell ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we tell ourselves the opposite. Yeah, and and it's sort of on even like a very basic level, people don't want to be aware of just things in their in the world around them or in their relationships yeah. and so on. But that's such a minute thing compared to desiring <laughs> awareness of who, how God who created we are. us. Like a big question. It's, it's like yeah. a it's a big lot of not wanting to know because yeah. like to want to know how god created you and who you are and what you really are actually yeah. and all this truth about the universe and everything there's a whole you're going to want to know what's happening next door yeah and the, the unfortunate thing is when we choose this lack of awareness we're really choosing to severely limit ourselves mm. and and 
unfortunately, the brain now, of course, um, needs to uh, doesn't need to have all of its operation anymore because we're choosing to close it down. Exactly. We don't need to use that amount of brain power anymore because we're hardly thinking at all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, if you examine the actions of most people on the planet, we're driven by mostly by chemical processes in the brain and meeting addictions. Mm. And and that's that requires very little thought. Yes. At all. Yeah. To be driven by those things. You, you just is. When you have a compulsion that you're meeting, you're hardly computing anything. Yes. And these little synapses in our brain just light up when we get those compulsions met, you know, just like you see somebody's eyes light up. You know? yeah. oh, beauty, that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. And, yeah. and, and that requires no real transmission or brain power. All that requires is a chemical interaction. Uh, with very little understanding of why that chemical interaction is occurring. You hardly, you hardly have to analyse your behaviour because due to it being a compulsion, it's so automated by now as well. Exactly. Yeah, or for exactly. most, when it's a developed compulsion. Exactly, yeah. 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 So uh, on, this other part of this paragraph is about the mind is a special creation mm. because it, and when it's properly utilised, it has the ability to pause our behaviour. Yes and examine its motivations yeah. and therefore examine the underlying uh, emotional conditions in the soul mm -hmm. that cause the motivations. Mm. So the brain has that power. That's why God gave us this mind in our spirit body and the brain in our physical body to make these kind of analysis and this kind of analysis and decision-making process. Yeah. Most of us don't use it mm. because we're driven by the chemical processes yes. in the brain firing up our pleasure centres in the yeah. brain, telling us that certain things are good and certain things are bad when really a lot of them are bad for us yeah. in the longer term. Yeah. And a, long, a lot of them also mean that we keep shutting down the mind's ability to make these other decisions and choices that are in our benefit. Yes. Yeah. And clearly chemical processes would be involved in them as well, but of you're course. saying we're just driven by these sort of more, what I would call more base or basic, uh, pleasure, pain, kind of. Yeah, we're driven by a uh, pleasure, pain, pain decision making process, yeah. unfortunately. And a very short term thinking, pleasure, yeah. pain. Yeah. yeah. Nowadays, scientists often refer to it as the re reptilian brain. Yeah. The, the brain, the part of us that is only driven by need and necessity. Yeah. And, and that, you know, that part of us, sure, that part of us is in, built in the brain of the human body. And, necessity and, and, by and God. not yeah. connected to the soul properly, no. that pain, part of you will dominate. Yeah. And in the Paget messages, we referred that to that part of you as the animal appetites. Yes. Because the physical body is an animal. Yes. It has appetites of its own. But these appetites are able to be controlled and utilised in far more powerful ways by the soul yeah. by using and using the mind of the spirit body to communicate to the brain so that it overcomes these particular animal appetites. Yeah. And so now it's driven by a more higher ideals, such yes. as ethics, morality, and other kinds of ideals. Yeah, mm. yeah. And then you have the more, the broader viewpoint of what's, what's not just going to bring me pleasure in the next five minutes, what's going to bring my long-term pleasure, and what's going to bring pleasure to people around me. How will and I avoid pain for my next for the rest of my life rather than just for the next five minutes. And what is the rest of my life? We can start looking at is yes. it just now while we're living on earth yeah. or is it longer term and therefore do I have to plan for that longer term mm. existence and what can I learn about this longer term existence mm. now yeah. so that when I am in that existence I am prepared for it. Yeah. Like yeah. These, are all, uh, these are all choices and the abilities to make these choices come from our soul. Yes. And, and the brain is just an organ that allows us to consciously to communicate about them in this realm, in the physical. Mm -hmm. But really the thought all comes from the soul if we allow it. Yes. Yep. But just if we can loop back around, there's one more thing about this brain mind that, that you've been raising about the ability to be self-aware, for us to be consciously self-aware. Mm -hmm. That's a funk. That's something that our brain is designed to to give us. No, via our, the workings. Yeah, it's more that our soul is designed to give us. Yes, but the brain has to be complex enough 
to allow for these thoughts to enter and exit. That's the design. Yes. That's the design. Yeah. So the the brain is still just a, 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 a information processing unit. Yes. A CPU, if you like. Yeah. A physical organism that processes things through chemical and electric uh, re- electrical yep. methods. Yeah. But the storage of the information isn't in this brain. Yeah. And, and we know this already if we examine medical profession. We can see that if a person has a stroke, mm. certain subparts of their motor functions are often lost. Yeah. But frequently they gain them back. Yes. Not because that part of the brain fired up again, because mm. that part of the brain died. Yeah. So therefore that part of the brain didn't have them. No. Right? So where were they? Yeah. If they're not in that part of the brain, where were they? Yeah. They have to be in something other than the physical brain. Yeah. Otherwise, the person wouldn't be able to relearn yeah. those same motor skills in another part of their brain. Yes. Right. So this all makes very logical sense. And we, as I said, we have plenty of proof yeah. that, the, that the human body brain is yeah. not the most complex of organisms that are associated uh, with yeah. the human soul. Yeah. And we have plenty of evidence about that. Really. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what I was going to raise with you, though, was about the... So we're talking a lot throughout this whole discussion about the death of the physical body yep. and that we continue on in a spirit body and we know the spirit body has a mind and it's designed similarly to the brain in the... The brain... Well, no, see, well, the way I would probably describe it is it's designed... The physical body's brain is designed for the physical body. Yeah. The spirit body's mind is designed for the functioning of the spirit body. Yes. So it's similar in that regard. Sorry, with a similar... I've got to make sure I use my words exactly. A similar function to the brain. So a similar CPU function to allow the self-awareness of the person in their spirit body. Yes. Is this correct? Well... This, the CPU function, if you like, of the spirit body mind yes. belongs to the spirit body. It yes. really has nothing to do with the physical body. No, right? no. The, spirit, the physical body's brain does all that work with the physical body. Yes. There, there is a communication pathway between the two. Yes. And that's a cord. It's yes. a, a, based on chemical and electrical impulses that pass between the spirit body and the physical body and that we call that the silver cord yeah and that allows the communication between the two things but as you correctly point out the brain of the physical body has to be developed enough to allow for certain types of communication to occur in order for self-awareness to be able to be processed yes and and that does require a large degree of complexity in comparison to an animal yes Mm. yes Yes. My question I'm getting to is about the spirit body mind. Yep. So basically, from everything we've just discussed, the spirit body mind logically is very important to us in our spirit state in the way that our brain is important to us in our physical body. Yes, but it's, 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 not, it's not the source of the thoughts. It's not the source of the of the information of the data. Of the data, like. yeah. It, it's required for the physiological functioning of the spirit body. Uh huh. That's its primary role. When we allow it to dominate, uh-huh. and we tune out of the mind of the soul. Yes. Right. That is allowing the brain or the thought now, the intellect, to dominate. Mm-hmm. Now we're detuning from the true mind that God gave us. Yes, okay. Which is the mind of the soul. Okay, so can we talk about that a bit? Because the I understand that the brain in the physical body is like data processing unit. For the physical body. For the physical body. And to allow for the interface. And to allow the interface with the spirit, spirit body. body mind. But we're talking here about its function in assistance of self-awareness. Is yeah. that correct? Well, no, what I'm saying is this. Yeah. Self-awareness comes from the soul. The spirit body's mind and the physical body's brain are not self-aware on their own. 
No. They are not capable of self-awareness on their own. Yes. But they do have to be complex enough yeah. to allow for thoughts of self-awareness yes. to enter them. Yes. Which is why they need to be far more complicated or complex than a mammal's, another mammal's brain. Uh -huh. So self-awareness self still comes from the soul. Originates in the soul. Thank you. I just wanted to. I was getting yeah. there. Self-awareness originates in the soul, and we just God has created a lot of apparatus and yes. attributes and uh, functionings yes. in in our subset bodies in our bodies. Yes to allow for us to almost compute that self-awareness or to experience that self-awareness. In that state. In that state. Yes. So, so if the physical body's brain wasn't complex enough, yeah. then you in your physical form would not know what self-awareness is. Yes. So it needs to be complex enough so that the soul can transmit ideas and concepts to it. Yes. So that you in your physical body can be self-aware. Yeah. So, but the self-awareness is not coming from the brain. No. It's coming from the soul that is be behind the brain. Yes. Right? It's the soul that is, that's governing those things. Yes. And that is why if we try to dominate, as you say in this message, dominate our existence with just the operations of the brain or, or the mind, mind yes. we are actually limiting the self-awareness, which is the kind of the opposite function that God created for these for these organisms. units yeah, yeah. To, to actually do. So we're actually working in opposition yes. to the design even yes. of our brain. Our, yeah. yeah. Our brain is meant to be the follower. Yes. And our physical body brain, that that's sort of demonstrated quite a lot, I feel, in our physical form because you know, when you get hungry, there's chemical processes that say now your body needs some sustenance to eat because otherwise you won't have enough fuel and so forth. These chemical processes trigger off a process in your brain that says, oh, I've got to find some food now, yep. and off you go and try to find some food. Like, yep, you yep. know, If that didn't happen, you would never feel hungry and you'd die from starvation. Yep. Your body would start die without fuel. Yep. It's the same with water. You know, if you, if you didn't have this process internally in the brain going, my physical body needs some moisture, mm -hmm. it needs to have more water, I need to get some more water in it soon, otherwise I'm going to dehydrate and die. Yep. And if that process didn't occur, yep. right, then you wouldn't bother getting any water and you'd die. Yeah. Now, those processes occur in animals. Yes. That's a part of the physical body's functionality and keeping the physical body mm -hmm. functioning. Mm -hmm. That's not self-awareness. Mm. So self-awareness is postulating questions such as, is there a God? Is there, you know, what, who am I? What why is, is it purpose? that I can, yeah. what's my purpose? Why, why is it that I can have thought, thoughts yeah. that are independent? Why is it that I love and other yeah. things don't seem to love? All of these questions come from uh, aspects of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Now, your brain has to be complicated enough to transmit those things. Yep. And it has to allow the senses to feel those things, mm -hmm. of the physical body to feel those things, but it doesn't come from the brain. Yeah. It comes from the spirit body. Yeah. The desire to know these things and understand these things it's comes from there. Not just the spirit body, from the from soul. From the soul, yeah. yeah, from the mind yeah. of the soul. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Transmitted through the spirit body's mind into the physical body's brain, giving yeah. you the, com the ability in your physical state to think about these matters. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> now, obviously, it's quite a complicated process. Yep. There's, a, there's cords of uh, energy that allow for transmission of mm -hmm. information to go between the physical and spirit bodies. And then there's cords of, of energy that allow for transmission between the spirit body and the half of the spirit body and the half of the soul. And then there's also cords of transmission that allow for the two halves to communicate with each other. Mm. And these cords can all be broken, mm -hmm. or not so much broken, but impeded or attenuated yeah. based upon the desire of the half of the soul, yeah. the individual. Yeah. So reality is we can be completely unaware that we have another half, even mm. though these, these cords are in place for communication. Yeah. And we can have completely we can be completely unaware of our soul when we're in a spirit state yeah. because of the lack of communication between the two you know between the two sides of the of the yeah, along the cord sort yeah. of thing. Yep. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So interesting, hey. Mm. Okay. 
All right. Do you want to keep reading? Sure. Uh, the next two paragraphs? Yes, or? please. Yes. Yeah. As I have heretofore written you, when God created man and made him in his own image, as to the soul, he also gave to man the possibility of obtaining the substance of the Father, that is, of having that soul, which was a mere image, become that soul which is of the substance of the Creator. Mm. I have also explained to you how man, by his disobedience, lost that possibility and for long centuries was deprived of this great privilege, and how it was again restored to him at the time of my coming to earth, so that now, he, now and for 19 centuries past, has had the possession of this great gift or privilege of partaking of the substance of the Father. Do you want to ask anything there? You want me to... No, keep going. Yeah, I know that's a bit emotional. Well, when man, by the way that has been appointed out to him, becomes possessed of the substance of the Father's divine nature, even in an initial degree, his soul commences to change and lose its character as a mere image and to progress towards the attainment of that condition when this image disappears and the divine substance takes its place. And as the progress continues, he receives so much of the substance that his soul takes on the divine nature of the Father. Mm -hmm. And his at one with the Father becomes so perfect that he becomes an inhabitant of the Father's kingdom. This occurs when he becomes fitted to enter the first celestial sphere. Mm. And just here occurs another thing which may startle those who teach that the mind is the essence of God. And that is that the mind which the mind which man, both as a mortal and spirit, possesses up to that point in the progress of the soul, where the transformation into the divine nature takes place, becomes a thing of naught, mm. or rather, becomes absorbed, absorbed into the mind of the soul, mm -hmm. which is the real mind of the Father. Mm -hmm. And then and ever after, only this mind of the soul is that which enables the real divine man to understand the things of God and help him in his progress. Yes. So <laughs> it's great that we just talked all about the mind mm -hmm. because this really comes to the fore now yeah. in this message. So I this is really amazing the way that you're now in this message starting to talk about the fact that we've it's like we are like the mini me version of god like you said it's just an image and yeah. it's just it's just in that it's but it's important to note that the image does not have the substance of the father it does yes. not have the substance of god in it yes it, it is a created image the only way that it has parts of god in it is that it's got god's design and materials that God's made to create it. Mm -hmm. But it does not have any other of the substance of God, the actual true substance of how God really is in it. It just has creations of God in it. It makes it the image. Yes, mm. yes. That's exactly what I was going to ask you about. Yeah, yeah just or to raise this. It's almost to me, it's like, um, and you might disagree with this very basic analogy, but it's like God as we've learned, has his soul and then has these attributes of personality, nature, all these things. And then it's like we uh, become these little like black and white sketches. <laughs> Which <laughs> I put on the board. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we just become sort of a black and white. The structure is the same. There's uniqueness about each of us, but there's not yet this substance or this technicolour part yeah, but it even goes more than God, that. It's that, even more than that. Yep. The substances that the soul is made out of, physically made out of, yeah, are actually only creations of God. They are not a part of God himself. Mm -hmm. So it's not like God fragmented off a bit of God to make each little soul. Yeah. What God did was create a whole heap of substances, substances and matter and yeah. matter yeah. which then form he formed into yeah. the soul yes right yeah. so at, at this stage you can see that this whole concept this new age concept that we are all sort of fragments of god is very flawed yeah because 
because the reality actually is that God created a whole heap of physical substances mm -hmm. and then out of those substances God manufactured our soul mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and at that point in time we are like an image of God's soul mm -hmm. but nothing of God's soul has yet to enter us yeah. aside from the concept the the you know the design which yeah. came from God and the substances which God made to form the soul they're yeah. the only thing of God that actually are in us at that stage this is the state of the perfect natural man. Mm -hmm. The perfect natural man is an image only created out of substances that God made, mm -hmm. not substances that are a part of God himself. Yeah. Right? And so these substances that God made to form the soul were created by God after God's existed, well after God exists, you know, God's existed for infinite time before then. Yeah. And God never needed these substances for anything to do with himself. Yes. He needed to form these substances in order to create the soul yep. and the bodies yep. to which the soul would be connected. Yes. In order for the soul to learn things and become a normal, natural human. Yeah. Right. But still, nothing has been received from God at this point, mm -hmm. aside from God's design and the substances God made in order to form the soul. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So God himself, his own substances are not yet shared mm -hmm. with the soul itself. Mm -hmm. There's no fragment, fragmentation of God that has gone on at this point. Yes. There's no parts of God that has entered the soul at this point. Mm -hmm. the, the, the person is just a perfect, natural creation of God, created within the image of God in, in that we, are, we, we are operate in a similar manner to God in that we have feelings and emotions and we have thoughts and we have personality and we have character and we have attributes and all of these other things that form the image that allow us to be to to operate in a similar manner to what god's soul operates but none of the substances of god exist at this stage within our soul god created substances that he then made our soul from yes Okay, good. Now, there's a few points just yep. to cover there. So what about this idea that many people say that there is a divine spark within us? So not, a, not, a, not that we are all God, but there is a divine spark within us. What do you say about that? Saying the words divine spark implies that there's something of God placed mm -hmm. inside of us. And you're... This, this is not true. Okay. This is definitely not true. Yep. But reality is God, as I said earlier, God, just now, God created substances and then out of those substances formed our soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, we are a creation. Yeah. Initially, with no part of God's divine nature, no part of divinity is within us, with the exception that the design is divine, yeah, the just but just because like the a, design comes from the mind of God, so the design of the human soul is a, a divine design. Yeah, but, but isn't it's a not tree a, spark a divine of the design? Yeah, a tree is a divine, divine design. design. So yeah. too, exactly yes. the same way. Yeah. A, an animal, a dog, a cat, yeah. you know, a kangaroo, yeah. divine designs. Yeah, you know, yeah. insects, worms, divine yeah. designs. They yeah. all come from the, the the mind of God as a design, yep. but they are all formed out of the substances that God created, the basic building blocks of creation mm -hmm. that God formed together to make these particular substances. And they also needed a whole heap of laws that God also had to create, as we, as we looked at in the third assistance group, in order for them to function yeah. and interact yeah. properly with yeah. the rest of the universe. Yeah. Now, all of those creations of God, right, all of them do not have God's, any part of God's substance in them, except God's design <laughs> and the substances that God created in order to form them. Mm. That's it. That's it. Okay, great. So I think so, we need to be that clear <laughs> because if you can see a lot of New Age concepts, it just are wiped off the board there yes. and then, aren't they, when yes. you look at that? Yeah. And this is, a, and we need to understand 
that the human soul, without the reception of attributes from God, the human soul stands as a creation only, an image only yes. of God. So we're like this creation made of separate substances to what God is made of, yes. but in a similar look and feel <laughs> in a similar structure well it's basis. a very clever design for a lot of reason because yep. it, it, he also designed in the potential yes to receive substances from god yes which is a which is something he didn't put into any other creation yeah so that's a very important point very important without point. that design of being able to have the potential of receiving substance from god we would never have the ability to become divine <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I'm interrupting you so many times. It's so, it just cracks me up because yeah. I'm like, okay, there's this thing to talk about. Let's talk about that and then we'll move on to the other thing. And then as I'm talking about it, you talk about this other thing and I'm like, okay, I've got to remember we need to talk about that. And we're gonna... <laughs> I've got a management system filing in my Which head. Which is getting you rid of the Greek bit. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I, lo I love it. I love this discussion. Yeah. So it's all yeah. good. Now... Uh, so basically, though, you're saying that the, the inherent in this design, there's some uniqueness. One is that we are, we have the capacity to be self-aware and pretty darn self-aware, actually. Yes, because and, that, and that's very different than every other creation. Yes, the soul is is unique yep. in that it is, uh, uh, ent it is who we are, and it's this entity that can be self-aware. Well, you could say it is a special creation of God. Which it is. Yeah. It's a very unique, special. It's the only thing that God created in the in this universe that is an image yeah. of God. Yeah. And nothing else did God create that was an image of God. Yeah. In the sense that it, in the sense that it could function in a similar way to God's soul function, but without the same power. Yes. Course. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Very. So unique. it's it's pretty pretty wow. Even in and of itself, before we receive any of the substances from God, yes. it's like wow, amazing creation. Yeah, yeah amazing creation. I amazing, and yeah. and even though there's lots of terrible things that are happening on our planet at the moment, there's some pretty wow things that that God's creation, God's highest creation, is actually doing without any connection to God. Correct. Correct, yeah. and God designed it that way. God yeah. wanted God, the, his creations to enjoy the process of creating and enjoy the process of understanding and all that, even if it meant doing so without God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just finally then, what about this, because I know that you've taught extensively that a part of God's, each of our unique personality and nature is somehow a reflection of something within God's personality and nature. So can we just clarify? Yeah, so we're not saying that there that God's substance is uh -huh. in us or yeah. God's part of that fragment of God's personality is in us. Yep. I'm not saying that. Yep. What we're saying is that the personality that we have yep. is like a, uh, a copy, a duplicate of a little bit of God's personality. Yeah. Right. So God and God created it that way so that we'd all come to understand God better in the yeah. end. If the more we interacted with more people, the more we'd come to understand God's full nature. Mm -hmm. But but it's not God's substance yet. It's not God's real personality. It's a copy of God's con it's just like just like the soul is a copy of God's soul yes. formed out of materials that God formed. Yeah. So too the personality is a copy of bits of God's personality yeah. formed out of the materials God formed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And but it's it's under the control of this personal will that each of us have. Yes. This this personality and nature that in its pristine state is similar to God's expression well, of what it. are we saying are the pristine state here? We've also to probably be quite yeah, oh my goodness. definite about that. We Cause, do. Because the, the pristine state really without God's uh, substances being received, received yeah. is the sixth fear state, right? So the sixth dimension state, the perfect natural man. Mm -hmm. And yes, in that state, you meet people there in that state and they do reflect certain parts of, you know, every single person, as I've said in the past reflects little bits of God's personality and nature because God put a copy of that part of the, his personality or nature inside the person when he formed their soul. Mm. So, But it's still not part of the substance of God yet. 
No. Yeah. And presumably the expression of that nature and personality is not really, um, it wouldn't have the same quality yet. It's still not divine. It's still not a it's divine the, it's expression the, it's of the it. the best that person can be as a human as with a that human. personality. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> no more. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, uh, yeah, I think it's very, very important that mm. our audience sort of understand some of those principles because, um, you know, the, the, frequently people, when they listen to divine truth, they think, oh, you mean this and you mean that. And I'm going, no, I don't mean that at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think I mean that because that's what you would like me to mean. But, yeah. but the reality is quite different. When God created our soul, he formed us mm -hmm. as the Bible actually says, he formed us out of the dust of the earth. But, but that, you know, our physical body, that's certainly true. But, but our soul is being formed out of the dust of the universe, mm. if you could think of it like that, mm. or the smallest particles mm. of the universe is what God used to form our soul. And our personality was formed in a similar manner. A copy of our personality was placed in us. And the laws had to be formed even before then. Otherwise, mm. the soul itself wouldn't have been able to exist before its incarnation without the laws existing. Yeah. So God actually firstly created the structure mm -hmm. from God's mind. He created the structure of the entire universe, which is actually the laws. It's not the universe itself. And then the universe came into existence um, through the laws. And then once the universe came into existence, now there's substances yep. that can be utilized yep. and laws already as a framework. Yep. And the substances were utilized to form the images mm -hmm. of God's soul, yep. which, of which every human soul, of which we are one half. Yes, each, well, we, only, are, we one. are one. But <laughs> yeah. We are one, but each individual one half. Yeah. And has actually had some uh, creation from an interaction with the, yeah. this universe. So, so it's important that we understand that because, because this uh, also helps us begin to understand the significance of what it means to receive a substance from God. Yes. Because it's a very, very different process than just being the perfect natural person. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to talk more about... Mm -hmm receiving this substance yes yeah um because a lot of changes happen uh and this is where i have my little mental image of the little you know xerox black black and white image yep it now becomes as we receive a substance from god wow a lot of things change yeah but it's not like becoming color no in a lot of ways is it no. It's now a superset of what it was. Yeah. It's not just a colourful part of what it was. Yeah. It's now much bigger than what it was. And in fact, has the ability to infinitely grow much bigger mm -hmm. because God being an infinite being, supplying substances means that the substances supplied are potentially infinite. Mm -hmm. And therefore the soul, the human soul, has the ability not only to be transformed into divine, but to thereafter grow yeah. into a larger and larger divine creature. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the intricate thing that God made when he made the image. Yeah. So he made this image, but he made also this potential. And if you think about it, this potential is more complex than the image itself. Well, and Far this, more complex. Yes. And you say this here in the message. You say, um, when man, by the way that it has been pointed out to him, becomes possessed of the substance of the Father's divine nature... Even in an initial degree, his soul commences to change and lose its character as a mere image mm -hmm. and to progress towards the attainment of that condition when this image disappears and the divine substance takes its place. Yes. So we're talking really like a metamorphosis, aren't it, we? It's a complete metamorphosis. It's like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Certainly that's probably the best analogy yeah. uh, on, on earth because it, it's... A, to, for the caterpillar to turn into a butterfly, it, it almost has to be completely deconstructed. It turns back into a fluid and then it gets turned into a completely new creature yeah. with completely new abilities. Yeah. Right? And it's very, very similar to what happens with the soul receiving God's love or receiving other substances too from God's love. It transforms to such an extent that it's no longer even able to be recognisable anymore mm. as the original. Mm. Right? It's completely, completely different. 
than the original now. And would you say that it's almost like that as a process that you're going through as receiving these substances, like different things within you almost feel like they're being dissolved and different... Often that's, that's the feeling, Different yeah. understandings have to be completely dissolved to open up to, to kind of receive the truth about that matter because we yes. have so many internal constructs and different and the, ways that we view And things. the human brain and the, and, the, and the spirit body's mind, the human mind mm -hmm. and the spirit body, are totally incapable of understanding or even accepting, in most cases, the actual process that you go through. Yeah. It's only the soul that is capable of accepting these particular processes. And so you, this is where we've got to give up the whole process of trying to control the, what happens here. It, it, it requires a lot, of, uh, a, lo a lot of trust in God, but when you think about it, trusting God should be quite easy, given yeah. the fact that he's the most loving being in the universe. It should be quite easy to trust but unfortunately, that's not the way we even see it in this state. And, and also, there's a tendency to start seeing it as giving up of oneself. And, there's, mm -hmm. uh, and although the message may seem to imply that, that's not actually what happens. Mm. What happens is that initially you could say when you become the perfect natural human, you've got your mind functioning and you've got your decisions being made, but everything is happening internally. Yep. Without there being, there's some influences that come from external humans or, you know, other minds that may influence your choice and decisions. But every change you make is an internal change and every decision you make is yours. Yep. You, you make these decisions and choices now. And, and you, what you think is right and wrong is yours mm -hmm. at this stage. Mm -hmm. you know? And you get to the stage in the sixth sphere where you're perfected that what you think is right and wrong as regards the treatment of others yeah. is pretty much identical to what everybody else thinks is right and wrong as regards the treatment of others, but it's still not what God views as the treatment of others. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just what all of you now agree is, is the ethical, correct. Yeah. not yeah. the moral, but the ethical treatment of others. Yeah. That's all it is. There's nothing more. Mm -hmm. But when you start receiving the connection with God, receiving God's love, the mind of God starts having a stronger connection with your mind of your soul. So much so that in the end, your mind, which, which has thoughts, is now in complete harmony. It gets to the point where it's in complete harmony with God's mind. Mm. So you're still an independent being. You still can generate your own thoughts. Yep. But those thoughts are in harmony with subsets of God's thoughts. So you're saying, uh, I'd like to clarify that, because you say here in this message um, that the mind of both the mortal and the spirit, let me just find the place, mm -hmm. um, and just here occurs another thing which may startle those who teach that the mind is the essence of God, mm -hmm. and that is that the mind which man, both as mortal and spirit, possesses up to that point in the progress of the soul where the transformation into the divine nature takes place, becomes a thing of naught. So all this stuff we've talked about with the brain and physical body and the, it's not the just mind that. of the spirit. There is also in the soul, the image, in the image soul, yes. the one that is yet to receive the substance of the father. Yes. The image of the soul has a mind of its own. Yes. Right. But it is its own mind. Yep. It's not influenced by anything else other than, it's not controlled by anything other than itself. Yep. It's its own mind. Yep. And it only has the capacity to be its own mind too. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the capacity to, to be a part of God's mind mm -hmm. at, this, at that stage. Yeah. It has the potential only. Yep. Yep. And receiving divine love is what uh, allows the potential to grow. Yep. But but the important thing is, when we do receive God's love to the point of becoming at one with God, that soul's mind, which used to be the image and used to be of its own control, yes, and used to be, um, you know, having its own thoughts and its own ideas and its own concepts, and still has ideas and concepts out of harmony with God's at that stage. Up until this point. Up until the point. Yep, yep. Once it's transformed, yep. now God's mind and, and your mind are in complete harmony, mm -hmm. although not to the same power. Yep. So now 
you don't have the power of God and it's not like you are now God. No. Because you're still a separate entity. But God's mind now and your mind are in complete synchronization when it comes to the flow of information. It's like your mind has become a part of God's mind. And that's what you say here, that you that you actually become absorbed into in, the mind of God. Well, you say in the mind of the soul. So yes. that's you referring to the mind of the soul. Yeah. But then you say, which is the real mind of the, the father. father. So that's right. so you're saying, though, because it could be read a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. You're saying, though, that my mind in my soul, before I've received any uh, love, mm -hmm. specifically from God, mm -hmm. is my mind alone. It's not the mind of God. No. But once I reach this state where I receive more and more and more of God's love, mm -hmm. now my mind becomes absorbed into the mind of God. Yes, you could think of God's mind being here and you're just a little knob, knob, nodule on the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, am I inside of it? Well, you're inside of it. Mm -hmm. You're not mm -hmm. its complete size or scope no. or infinite capacity yep. because you are still a finite being. Yeah. Right? But you're inside of God's mind now. You know what God's thinking. Mm. And, and this is a wonderful thing because you can have thoughts and also know what God's thinking. So am I having my own thoughts or am I having God's thoughts? Yes, this is a beautiful thing, is that you are still having your own thoughts, yeah. but your own thoughts are in harmony, harmony. with or a subset of God's thoughts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, that, that makes sense to me. But I can see that that might be quite challenging for some people to understand as uh, conceptually how you can be inside a mind but have your own mind. Um, well, if we think about it, your physical body's brain is really inside the spirit body's mind. Yes. But does have its own functioning. Yes. Does it not? It does. So isn't it much the same as that? But isn't it directed by... by of course. This, it's exactly the yes. same as what I'm describing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly the same. So it's like, yeah, like we we do have examples of it yeah. in our personal yeah. makeup. Yeah. Even as a perfect natural man, yeah. we have examples of it occurring. Yeah. But but the where we struggle, and so the, there's another aspect too that we haven't considered, and that is we're talking here about the half of the soul too, by the way. Mm -hmm. And and don't forget that there's the other half of the soul mm -hmm. that also can be absorbed you can be absorbed into its mind as well. Yes, which is also, the, I guess um, what I was saying is that I can, it makes total sense, but there are many emotional blockages we have. Of course. Of course. Relating fears. 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 Relating to being absorbed or, or well, acting in see, unison even. With, see, when we think of being absorbed here, mm -hmm. Most people think, oh, that means now God tells me everything to do. No, no, because to do that, God would have to then break God's own laws. Yeah. And God's not going to do that. Yeah. But, but the reality is at this stage, because you have so much love in your soul mm -hmm. and that love has come from God yeah. and therefore is a substance of the divine, yeah. that love has transformed your soul to have these new capacities. And one of these new capacities is you can exist in God's mind. Mm. And this allows you now to know exactly what God feels about every subject, mm -hmm. to ask questions. You still discover, you're still, you're still growing, you're still discovering, but you now ha have the ability, it's like sitting on God's lap. Yeah. Because you now have the ability for true communication between yourself mm. and God to occur through your minds. Yeah. Before then, your, your discovery process is more convoluted and, yeah. and, and more difficult. Yeah. But after then, your discovery process is simplified because you, you are now, uh, the more open you become to hearing God, uh, communicating through God, God's mind to yours mm -hmm. uh, and remembering this communication is not intellectual as what people would think. It's, mm -hmm. it's an emotional, emotional mm -hmm. process of the soul's mind. Mm -hmm. it, once that occurs, now you've got the ability to start absorbing other attributes of God, other ideas and concepts that only the soul that is in this state of being a part of God's mind can actually do. Yeah. 
And that's no, that, pretty incredible. Yeah. Before then, that soul was not capable of doing it. Mm. Mm. The other thing is because so many of us do view ourselves as our mind, mm -hmm. the thought of being absorbed into another person's mind... It's like losing oneself. It's like losing oneself. Mm. But really, when we're absorbed in that way, and that's what you were alluding to before, we have our own will and desires and passions and, and actions even that are completely our own. It's just that our mind is in harmony and has access to the mind of God. Completely. Yeah. Completely. If, oh, if I'm based on desire, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, it's just fantastic provision, isn't it? Yes, and, and we still don't have the capacity to understand everything about God. Mm -mm. And the reason why is because uh, to do that, we would probably have to be God in the long run. We're going to constantly be discovering things about God. But now our mind is capable of understanding God's things. Mm before it was not capable. Yep. So remember when now we're talking about the mind of the soul, yep. the mind of the soul is now capable. See, the mind of the soul when we're in an image, and when we're in an image only, mm -hmm. the perfect natural man, that mind is not capable of understanding the things of God. No. And this is why when I talk to many six fear spirits, you can see that they are not capable of understanding many of the things pertaining to God yep. and pertaining to the universe surrounding the soul-based existence. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the mind is absorbed by the mind of God, if you like, or becomes a part of the mind of God, because you're now in harmony with the mind of God, yeah. now you have the capacity to begin understanding things that the image was incapable yeah. of understanding. Yeah. Right. Whole new concepts, whole new ideas, whole new realms of existence become open to you in that state. Mm. And this is why it's such an important state to talk about mm -hmm. because it because it it's a completely different state than being the perfect natural image mm -hmm. of god mm. Mm. yeah yeah mm. wow okay now by this stage in the message poor old paget was getting a bit <laughs> <laughs> overwhelmed just like probably anybody who's listening to the last <laughs> last discussions we've had probably is and I found that he was getting pretty tired and overwhelmed and I thought well yeah, perhaps now I better stop and uh, and let the poor guy have a go and feel about that um, yeah because it, it was uh, you know obviously we were trying to you know, he was getting quite confused by this stage about well, how can the mind of God does that mean we lose ourselves and does that you know there's yeah. a lot of questions that he had about that and he's getting start to get quite distressed about some of those questions and and, he, and you know he's trying to tra channel but but finding it quite difficult and and as a result of that by this stage i'm starting to lose some uh, integrity R in rapport, the, and, rapport and, yeah. and integrity in the communication so yeah. so uh, once once we found with paget or any person we tried to communicate with on earth once you start losing that sort of the basic uh, principle being true in the conversation, yeah. then really there's not much point in continuing the conversation after that. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. So, so you say a few more so things. I said to him, I'll continue later, you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, I love you and you have me with you at all times to help you and sustain and comfort you. Mm. And I yeah. said good night to him. Yeah. yeah. So perhaps I had one more question noted down here. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, we might ask that and then we'll talk a little bit about the next message. But um, you've said that the soul is the only real part of us all the way throughout this message. How can we come to live and experience ourselves via the soul? Well, we've already talked about that a lot, haven't we? We have. And this is about opening up to the true state that you have emotionally rather than what you the image of yourself that you've created mm -hmm. see unfortunately what we've done is god's created an image of himself in our soul and then we decided that's not good enough yeah or our parents or somebody yeah. in our history thought it wasn't good enough so what we then decided was to create a facade for it yeah and so we were busy 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 creating a facade unfortunately also absorbing many of the emotional and and belief system injuries of our parents in the process which shut down self-awareness of the image mm. to such a point that it degraded the condition of the soul from the sixth dimension down to the hells of the first yeah 
and uh, and so that's the reason why most of us on earth we are in the you know the average person who passes is probably in the middle or just a bit under the middle of the first sphere of the spirit world when we pass mm. and and that's because of all of these shutdowns that have occurred emotionally intellectually belief systems possibilities understanding of oneself understanding the universe actually loving you know this is where the biggest shutdown occurred mm -hmm. understanding that you know god's way of love compared to the human way of love they're very very different mm -hmm. and, and the human way of love from god's perspective is not called love it's called evil yeah actually god yeah. god sees it as evil most of the yeah. so-called love that the humans yeah. display there are times where that's not true, yeah. of course. You know, I was just smiling because at the assistance groups you called it evil, exactly, which is love spelled backwards, which is very close, close to, to evil. evil. Yeah, <laughs> which happens to be how God sees much yeah. of human so-called human love. Yeah. So-called human love often uh, sacrifices one person for another, mm -hmm. sacrifices the environment for itself, mm -hmm. sacrifices others for them for yourself, mm -hmm. and or sacrifices yourself for others. And all of these things are not love. They are all distortions yeah. of, of love. And unfortunately, by that stage, our poor little image mm. of the soul is a poor little yeah. image. It is an image that is poor in the sense of it has no spiritual development. It's a shrinking. It's a shrinking proposition. Yep. Uh, it has a shrinking life. It has a fear, a growing fear-based life. Mm -hmm. And that causes us to shrink down into this feeling of almost no connection with the image of ourselves, the, the real image, the soul image God created. Mm. And also no connection with God frequently. Mm. Mm. But even in that state, because mm -hmm. many of us, uh, when we, we first relate hear, to that state. yeah, we yeah. relate to that state. Uh, even in that state, we're still a soul. That's the S, the truth That's of who the we are is we're still a soul, aren't yeah. we? We're still the image, mm -hmm. but we're just a shrunken, shriveled image. Yes. Now. Yeah. It's often self-caused, but also frequently harmed by others mm -hmm. to cause us to shrink into this mm -hmm. shriveled, dried up shell <laughs> of an image. Yeah. But, but the reality is we can recover it. Yeah. And, uh, and God's love can help us recover it, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And coming to view ourselves as the truth of who we are, a soul, an yeah. image of God, yeah. how, w in order to to connect to that as a truth we have to work through a lot of what you were saying earlier the detunement the detachment the belief systems the belief emotions systems. addictions yeah. fears yeah these are all the essential self judgment yeah all yeah. essential the, particularly our beliefs about love because yeah. when you think about it, every one of those things we mentioned is a belief about love yeah that's out of harmony with god's yeah and we've got to work through them god's yeah. god's every day trying to show us where we're out of harmony with love yeah and and that's the thing that god's trying to demonstrate to us how to how to cure how yeah to, how to get rid of yeah. now a lot of that is our creation and so therefore it has to be our process of destruction mm -hmm. god doesn't destroy things that we created mm -hmm. so if we created a belief that says that god doesn't exist then god's going to wait for us to destroy that belief he's not going to destroy mm -hmm. it for us He's going to give us help to destroy it mm -hmm. through different operations, which we talk about a bit in the next uh, in the yep. next flow on from this message. He's going to help us to have realizations that cause us to destroy that particular construction. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's going to be up to our desire to destroy it, mm. and and that applies to all of our creations. All of our unloving creations must be destroyed by us. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a difficult process, and that's the process where most people get very frustrated. Yeah. They want God to do it all. It's, <laughs> sort, it's sort of like what we generally want is we make a mess, and it, we're like children in that regard, unruly yeah. children. Yeah. We make a mess but take no responsibility for cleaning it up. <laughs> and God's going, no, 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 you are responsible children even though you don't believe you are. <laughs> yeah. You are going to clean up your mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and he, he gives you assistance to do it just like any loving parent would, you know, by showing you how to clean up the mess and so forth. But at the end of the day, he's not going to clean up your mess for you. Yeah. He's, yeah. Going, to, he's going to require that you take the actions necessary to bring your soul into harmony and to clean up the messes you've created. Yeah. And that's, a, that's an aspect of responsibility. Yeah. You know, we are responsible for our creations. Yeah. He makes us responsible. Yeah. 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 
And and I wanted to end on that question as well because in our next discussion, I'd like to talk a lot about with you about this. Well, partly it's this process you've just outlined of taking personal responsibility, but also the fact that God, even though we uh, might tell ourselves, tell ourselves that we. Um, you know, it's a big mess. Actually, there's a lot that God is doing continually to prepare ourselves, prepare each of us yes. to connect to our soul, to come to understand that we are a soul and then to receive her love. And yes. so um, I'm looking forward to talking with you more about that in the next discussion. And that's what we will focus on a lot more in the, the next message that you gave to Paget. Yes. Uh, you, you made a lot of, you said some statements, but you also made a lot of, you did, as much as you could through Paget, you made hints and and tried to lead him towards what you were trying to say there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the next part of the discussion is quite important. Yeah. Because it, it also outlines how, you know, we can't just rely on God to clean up our mess and yeah. rely on God to clean up our soul yeah. so that we can receive love. You know, yeah. that there are things that we need to take action about ourselves and yeah. be responsible for. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much for yeah. a great discussion, darling. Right, and, yeah. yeah. Thank thanks you. to everybody as yeah. well who are listening in. Uh, hopefully you understood that last part. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a difficult part to understand maybe. <laughs> but you'll need the mind of God to understand it in the end. <laughs> I always say it's great that you have a pause button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I try and act as your human pause button. It's not such a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, so we'll probably get to the next one next week sometime, won't we? Yeah, so, hopefully. Yeah. So we'll see you then. Yeah. See you later. <laughs>